Warzone is back on the menu, boys. Season 3 just dropped and brought back the iconic Rebirth Island and Resurgence mode. And I had an absolute blast hopping back into this game and playing it the way I like to play, which is basically using floor loot and any of the free content that the game has dropped. I ended up using the well-traveled MCW Assault Rifle Blueprint that comes with the free Warzone 4 Anniversary Bundle. And then basically jumped in to see how well I could do just using floor loot and matching with randoms. Then I think you'll be surprised by some of the results. Now, if you're not familiar with Rebirth Island, I believe this was actually the first small map in Warzone's history, and it's kind of carved out a nice little fan base, which I would count myself one of. The last season, we saw the return of Fortune's Keep, and while that was also a smaller map, it had a lot more open and less dense interior combat than Rebirth Island. So it did make some of the initial drops a little more challenging. And dive bombing rooftops and looting up for building fights has always kind of been the bread and butter of Warzone for me, and it really plays well on Rebirth, which is nice. Sure, the meta builds and more customized loadouts can give you a slight advantage, but you can loot a really competitive build right off the ground, which makes the game just less of a cool kid's club, and it also gives me this fun avenue to play the game where I don't feel like I'm just grinding up to get the next best weapon. I can just use what's available. Now that said, one thing that does give me a competitive advantage is NVIDIA's reflex setting, and I haven't exactly made it a secret over the years that I've been a huge NVIDIA fanboy. I I think I've been using NVIDIA cards for the entire time that I've been making YouTube content, and there's a good reason why. They literally offer a competitive advantage in games that support some of their features like Reflex. And I'd like to give NVIDIA a shout out for sponsoring this video and being an awesome partner to work with over the years. And in my opinion, if you are gaming semi-competitively, casual competitively, if you want an advantage, then Reflex just simply is a must. It can reduce your latency by over 25% in Warzone zone and when you notice that difference it's pretty much impossible to go back and if you've been pc gaming for a while and you're familiar with going down that rabbit hole of performance guides and optimizing games to run as fast and performant as possible you know it gets kind of old and your mileage is generally going to vary and what i like about so many of nvidia settings like reflex you can just turn it on and get a straight up improvement also if you're finding that your game is very cpu bound you can mess around with reflex boost to automatically ramp up your power usage on demand and sacrifice a few FPS to further reduce system latency, which I think is absolutely worth it. Also, I can use Reflex on pretty much any computer I own that has an NVIDIA GPU in it, as long as it's a 900 series card or newer. So just about any PC I own at this point can do it. Now, for more info about Reflex and NVIDIA's other products, check out the link below. And thanks again to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. All right, so getting back into Warzone, my goal this time around was to get a win on the new Rebirth Island using only floor loot or the now free MCW Assault Rifle Blueprint. Basically just the anyone can jump into the game and get this gear right away content. And pretty much every match I played, I had a decent loadout just from opening a few crates. And there's also the custom loadout cases that are now scattered around the map that give you one of your loadouts as loot, which is pretty cool. They kind of mix up the meta from always having to go for loadout crates. Now, something that I've really grown to like about Warzone's matchmaking is the filter features. You can basically filter your teammates by like their communication preferences. Are they using a microphone or are they chatting on their keyboard? What's their spoken language? You can make sure you all speak the same language. You can even go into play styles. Like how do people like to play? Do they like to be really conservative and hide away? Or are they more aggressive? You can basically make a team that caters to you and it's awesome, especially if you're feeling more communicative and like you want to try hard to get some wins or you just want to chat it up with some people or you want to relax and not be bothered by voice comms you can basically set it up for the style that you're in the mood for and it makes jumping back into the game that much easier where i don't feel like i have to get a pre-made party to have a good time i hope more games can start integrating features like this because it's honestly one of my favorite quality of life features about the game 
Now checking out the rest of Season 3's features, there's a new field upgrade called Squad Rage that basically gives you faster health regeneration and tactical sprint, plus some resistance to vision impairing gadgets. Then there's new biometric scanners that are scattered around the map and they give you a key card to redeem at buy stations for some free gear. And Rebirth now features a variable time of day system, which is pretty cool. There's also a new SMG and a charge up railgun sniper that look pretty dope, though I didn't spend too much time with these weapons. And then of course, they also added Snoop Dogg as a playable character to the game, so naturally I had to equip him. Cause when in Rome, right? I mean, how many other games let you play as Snoop Dogg? Now when I first jumped into Rebirth Island, I noticed that it's also been revamped pretty significantly with new buildings, kind of an updated layout, different loot spawns. It's basically a huge facelift that adapts the map for the more modern Warzone experience. And I gotta say it's nice to see when devs really seem to understand their gameplay flow and map layout logic. This is something that seems like it should be commonplace in most games, but it isn't. But COD has always seemed to understand that to some degree, and it's really nice to see in something like Warzone, since these are huge, complex maps, designing them to flow properly is a bit more challenging than their smaller three-lane designs. Also, the prison is basically the centerpiece of the map, and it's it's become the huge hotspot. So if you just want to like drop in for instant combat with multiple teams, uh, you can drop there every single time if that's what you're in the mood for. And sometimes I was. Now, as for how well I managed to do with just floor and free weapon blueprints, not only did I have a good time while playing with the strategy, which I would say even for myself is a bit unusual. I usually like to try hard a little bit more, but I actually did great and I felt like I could play pretty competitively while also taking more of a relaxed approach to the game. In most of the matches, I was holding my own against fully geared up enemies and even squashing some squads here and there on my own. This match here actually ended up getting really dire as the final few circles started to bear down on us. One of the guys in my party had to go AFK against the final enemy squad of two players. And while it might've put us on a bit of equal footing in terms of numbers, the other squad had much better positioning on a rooftop. When my squad mate was down, I genuinely thought I was about to get sent back to the menu with another second place finish as I was caught in a pretty bad position, but somehow I managed to kill the final enemy and get my win with the anniversary weapon blueprint build. And I gotta say, seeing Snoop Dogg in the victory cinematic is icing on the cake. A very COD moment, if you will. Now, a lot of my matches ended up with like some really close second place finishes, and I never felt like I was getting outplayed due to having worse gear. My setup of going for free weapon blueprints and floor loot was really effective, and at no point did I feel like I was raging against uh, OP meta builds and stuff, which can be a thing in COD sometimes, but at least for when I was playing, it just felt really clean the whole way through. So yeah, I've been having an absolute blast getting back into Call of Duty Battle Royale. It's really impressive how massive these seasonal updates feel, especially when you compare it to just about any other game out there. And I gotta take my hats off to the devs for designing an incredibly well-balanced map as well. Now again, if you want to check out the NVIDIA Reflex stuff, there's a link in the video description. Highly recommend it. And if you enjoyed this content, drop me a like, hit that subscribe button for more, and ding the notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.